Welcome to this edition of Ethical Sustainable Investment News and Analysis to Profit By. I'm Ron Robbins, an ethical investing pioneer for over 40 years, quoted in the Wall Street Journal, Market Watch, The Globe and Mail, and numerous other media, and founder of the highly respected global ethical sustainable investing information website, Investing for the Soul. And please listen to my disclosure disclaimer statement at the end of this podcast. Now enjoy this podcast. Hello, Ron Robbins here. Welcome to my podcast, Ethical and Sustainable Investing News to Profit By for August 30th, 2019. Presented by Investing for the Soul. Investingforthesoul.com is your site for vital global ethical and sustainable investing news, commentary, information, and resources. Investment ideas in these podcasts are generally gleaned from market participants in the US, Canadian, UK, European, Asian, and Australasian financial markets and Google any terms that are unfamiliar to you. Also, you can find a full transcript, live links, and often bonus material to these podcasts at the episode's podcast page located at investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts. Now to this podcast. With all the gun violence taking place in North America, and elsewhere, it's leading many investors to scrutinize their holdings and wanting to be rid of gun-related stocks. Well, if you're really concerned, Nitish Mawa has written an article titled Three Weapon-Free Funds to Whet Your Ethical Investment Appetite. He screens out gun and related manufacturers from the Zacks Mutual Fund Ranking and, as a result, recommends, first, the New Alternatives A Fund, symbol NALFX. Quoting Mr. Marway, he says, The fund invests in companies that contribute to a sustainable environment. NALFX has an annual expense ratio of 1.12%, which is below the category average of 1.3%. And the fund has three and five year returns of 8.4 and 5.9% respectively." End quote. His second choice is the Calvert Global Water Fund, A, symbol CFWAX. Again, quoting Mr. Mawa, the fund normally invests the majority of its assets in equity securities of domestic as well as foreign companies from the water industries or are involved in water-related service and technologies. CFWAX has an annual expense ratio of 1.24%, which is below the category average of 1.37%. The fund has three- and five-year returns of 6.5% and 2.5% respectively. End quote. Finally, his third pick is the Parnassus Core Equity Fund Investor Shares, symbol PRBLX. Mr. Mawa says about this fund that, and I quote, the PRBLX invests in large-cap companies which have long-term competitive advantage and positive performance on ESG criteria. PRBLX has an annual expense ratio of 0.87%. The fund has three- and five-year returns of 14% and 11.2% respectively." End quote. Of the three funds he recommends, clearly the latter one, the Parnassus Fund, stands out as a better and lower-cost performer. 
My next item comes from Matthew Delalu, writing for The Motley Fool in an article titled The Ten Biggest Renewable Energy Stocks, where he gives an overview of them. Incidentally, on this episode's podcast page, I'll have each company's Sustainalytics or CSR Hub ESG rankings, if available, and average analyst buy, sell, or hold opinions from Yahoo Finance. So the first company is Next Era Energy, the world's largest producer of wind and solar energy. Second company, Tesla. Mr. Delalo says is more than just an electric car company. Three, First Solar, focused on thin film solar. Four, Brookfield Renewable Partners, a leader in hydropower. Five, Solar Edge Technologies, optimizes renewable energy. Six, Enphased Energy, is a leader in micro inverters that converts DC power from solar panels into AC. 7. Ormac Technologies, a leader in geothermal power. 8. Terraform Power, is focused on wind and solar in North America and Western Europe. 9. Next Era Energy Partners, has a strategy to generate high-powered dividend growth. And finally, 10, Atlantica Yield, which has a diversified clean energy portfolio. Again, for more detailed stock, ESG, analyst opinions and information and links, go to this episode's podcast page at investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts. Now, are you also looking for ESG dividend stocks? If so, you could check out this post titled Why Paycar is a Top Socially Responsible Dividend Stock as PCAR on NASDAQ by BNK Invest appearing on NASDAQ.com At a recent price of around $64, its dividend yield was about 1.9%. However, though BNK Invest says Paycar has great SRI credentials, Sustainalytics on Yahoo Finance rated as a moderate ESG performer in its category. Nonetheless, it's difficult to find a reasonably paying sustainable dividend stock. So on that basis, it might be okay for some investors to consider if investment income is a high priority. A top Holding in ESG funds is Microsoft. The Motley Fool writer, Tim Byers, reviewed Microsoft as an ESG investment in his article entitled, ESG Investing, Is Microsoft a Responsible Investment? He concludes by saying that, while Microsoft isn't perfect, a 9 out of 10 on the Motley Fool's ESG compounder checklist is a sterling result. Should efforts to improve the company's diversity and inclusion practices continue to improve, it may not be long before we see Microsoft stick the landing alongside Accenture, which is on New York Exchange, ACN, which scores a perfect 10. Keep this company on your ESG shortlist if you don't already own shares. End quote. Microsoft is rated by Sustainalytics at Yahoo Finance very high in its category average and has an average buy rating among analysts. Looking at another individual stock, Maria Gallagher, also writing in a Motley Fool post, reviews Nike. Her post is titled, ESG Investing. Is Nike a Responsible Investment? She says that, quote, Nike scores an 8 out of 10 on our ESG checklist. This is a company that has lofty goals and is intentionally striving to meet them, 
which we admire. We think it's a strong ESG company with some work to do in its treatment of employees as well as diversity and inclusion. But Nike is headed in the right direction in both of these areas. End quote. Sustainalytics at Yahoo Finance rates Nike's ESG performance a little higher than average in its category. It's also given an average buy rating by analysts. Now, ESG ETFs are all the rage among ethical and sustainable investors, so it's good to come across George Gades's excellent article titled, Can ESG ETFs Outperform? In it, he reviews ESG ETFs from around the world and how they compare with their non-ESG counterparts. Globally, he compares Deutsche Bank's X-Trackers ESG MSCI World UCITS ETF, symbol XZWO on the London Exchange, with its non-ESG version, X-Trackers MSCI World UCITS ETF, symbol XDWD on the German Exchange. He found the ESG version outperforming the regular version and writes that since the inception of XZWO, it has outperformed its benchmark across a three-month year-to-date and one-year time frames. For the U.S., he says that, quote, the Lyxor MSCI USA ESG trend leaders UCITS ETF, symbol UESG, listed on the London Stock Exchange in May 2018 with a management fee of 0.25%, matching that of its non-screen version, the Lyxor MSCI USA, UCITS ETF, symbol USAU, on the, also on the London Exchange. Again, UESG's return beat USAU's, but with a smaller margin. And for Europe, he writes that another ESG product launched by DWS, an arm of Deutsche Bank, was the X-Trackers ESG MSCI Europe UCITS ETF, symbol XZEU on the Swiss exchange, which listed at the same time as its world exposed sibling. In just 15 months, the fund has poured in over $1.7 billion in assets. XZEU was an ESG version of the company's X Trackers MSCI Europe UCITS ETF symbol XMEU on German exchange which launched all the way back in September 2007. The XMEU has performed better than the ESG version. Well I hope you got all those um, elaborate um, stock explanations but anyway you can always go to the website um, and the version of this podcast to get all the information. These results generally appear to validate that ESG ETFs can produce returns as good and sometimes even better than their non-ESG equivalents. So go to this episode's podcast page for the details. Next item on the Kiplinger.com site, Harriet Lefton writes a post titled Five Top ESG Stocks on RBC Capital's Best Ideas List. The companies are Salesforce.com, NVIDIA, Next Era Energy, also referred to previously in this podcast, Microsoft, similarly referred to previously, and Gilead Sciences. Finally, a few points considering the upcoming 
we work IPO. Apparently, at least one writer is extremely critical of the company from both a financial and governance perspective. An article from gurufocus.com that appeared on Yahoo Finance says the following about the company. I quote, Unfortunately, for those hoping to buy in on a growth opportunity, WeWork shows little sign of making good on its promised profitability. End quote. But the real clincher, the writer says, and can be seen in this quote from Stratechery, that, quote, the tech industry, generally speaking, is hardly a model for good corporate governance. But WeWork takes the absurdity to an entirely different level. Everything taken together hints at a completely unaccountable executive looting a company that is running as quickly as it can from massive losses that may very well be fatal whenever the next recession hits. End quote. I don't know if any ESG ratings firm has rated WeWork, but irrespective of, of its profits prospects on governance issues alone, it may have real problems. So these are my top news stories and tips for ethical and sustainable investors over the past two weeks. Again, to get all the links or to read the transcript of this podcast and sometimes get additional information as we have here, please go to investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcast and scroll down to this episode. And be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons in iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you download or listen to this podcast. And please click the share buttons to share this podcast with your friends and family. That way you can help promote not only this podcast, but ethical and sustainable investing globally and help create a better world for us all. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions about the content of this podcast or anything else related. Now a big thank you for listening. Come again and my next podcast is scheduled for September 13th. See you then. Bye for now. Learn how to create a simple portfolio reflecting your personal values by taking my one-hour tutorial. Go to investingforthesoul.com forward slash podcasts and click the link in the right-hand column for my DIY Ethical Sustainable Investing Pays tutorial. Now, I'll mention in the podcast if I have any direct interest or holdings in companies or securities I'm talking about. Furthermore, any news, opinions, analysis or other information offered by myself, as well as references and information to or from other external sources in this podcast, is provided as general market information and should not be relied upon and thus does not constitute investment advice. Investors should consult their own licensed investment professional before making investments. Also, I will not accept liability for any loss or damage, including without limitation any loss of profit, which may arise directly or indirectly from use of or reliance on information in this podcast. Do contact me at ron r at investingforthesoul.com. Signing off, this is Ron Robbins.